You guys ever think about the worst thing ever? Because I'm pretty sure I found it. Okay, I'm not gonna front. Megamind's pretty goaded. You take Will Ferrell, Jonah Hill, and Brad Pitt, who by the way kind of looks like Markiplier in this movie, and you get something that's like super based, Kino, and all those other descriptive words in between. You can't really go wrong with the first Megamind. It's fun, it goes through many twists and turns, and it has such iconic jokes that we often go back to it and make them memes. So with it being one of the most beloved films of all time, it had many people wondering, where's the sequel to it? Well, <laughs> it took a long time for a reason, that's for sure. You see, Megamind has been celebrated for over 13 years. Making a sequel to an influential film such as this one is no easy task. So whether it be a sequel movie or a TV show, the creators of Megamind have to have known that they would have to have big shoes to fill. Even the news of a potential Megamind 2 excited people. So you go to the other day, when the trailer for Megamind 2 came out, and well, it, it wasn't good. Hello loyal viewers. Okay, so this was like the worst thing ever. Titled Megamind vs. The Doom Syndicate, this version of Megamind has no Tina Fey, has no Will Ferrell, and it has no Jonah Hill. I think that might be the worst of it. Actually, what may be worse is not subscribing to Zeepstered right now or liking this video. So this serves as not only Megamind 2, but also the pilot of a pending TV show to air on the streaming service Peacock. See, the genius about the first film is that it subverted what you would come to expect from a superhero movie. Twist is, Megamind no longer has a hero to fight. He gets bored of becoming a villain, so of course he creates his own superhero with Titan. Once Titan is rejected by the girl he likes, he turns into a supervillain. Megamind redeems himself by fighting Titan, and so on. At first, when the movie came out, it was fairly underrated. I remember watching the trailers for these movies when I was a kid and not being super stoked to go see it. But after I watched it, man, was it good. So will the sequel win when it comes to subverting my expectations? Uh, I'm gonna flat out and say it, no, no it's not. The part that just hurts the most is that it's a sequel movie. Th this is the official follow-up of the film, the canonical successor. You know, if this were just a TV show, I would have excused it a little bit, because when it comes to sequel TV shows to big movies, the animation isn't great. The comedy isn't as good either. Everything is worse. Everything is just way worse. Think about the straight-to-DVD Disney sequels, for God's sake. You think anyone ever thinks about Aladdin 2 fondly? No, people think about it as a big cash grab. Do you guys think people ever think about Penguins of Madagascar, the TV show, as fondly as the original Madagascar movies? Well, that's actually a special exception, never mind. Because I do remember that actually being pretty solid, but how often does this actually happen? It's kind of crazy how the legacy of Megamind has just been soiled just with this trailer. A trailer that's definitely going just for kids, and don't get me wrong, I know Megamind is a kid's film. But I would argue that the plot itself was not only just sophisticated enough just for children, but also for adults as well. Like, all of a sudden you get a TV show, that's insanely dumbed down with very lowbrow attempts at humor. Kind of a big deal. And you're welcome. You're all so lucky to have me as your hero. Wow. So the plot for the TV show is as follows. Megamind is now trying to be a good guy, but being a good guy comes with its disappointments. For example, there's a new supervillain group that's trying its best to destroy Megamind. Despite the fact that in the first film it was well established that there was only one good guy and one bad guy, one of the villains is someone who used to know Megamind, who didn't know that he had a turn of heart following the events of the first film. I don't know how he never received any word of that because that seemed pretty big in this movie's universe, but you know, who cares? The character design is kind of atrocious. It makes me think about the Incredibles 2 character designs. You know how like the background characters in that movie are kind of like ugly? I know, it may be kind of a hot take because I'm not the biggest Incredibles 2 fan in the world, but I'm just being honest, the characters in Incredibles 2 don't look good. I'm talking about the supers here. There's nothing really appealing to them when it meets the eye. I know Daz Reviews made this a point in his own video about Megamind, but I thought about Incredibles before I even saw his video. What's even more odd is that there's another character in this TV show for Megamind where it's like a kid, but it's a kid designed off of like recent TV shows if that makes any sense. Like do you remember a couple years back there was that one Star Wars Young Jedi Adventures TV show that was for Disney Plus? Like it just makes me think, like is this just how characters are designed now? It's not really terrible, it's just more boring rather than anything. I know I'm kind of going all over the place when it comes to this video, but something that is really funny to me is how many animation errors I've spotted while watching the trailer for this show slash movie. For example, there's this one scene in the trailer where Megamind's shooting tennis balls out of like a gun, which it's kind of funny because he's had so many better inventions in the actual film itself, but like the tennis balls clip out of reality when he pulls the trigger to shoot the tennis balls. It's actually kind of awesome. 
it's just wild to me because Mega Man is like hit after hit when it comes to its punchlines. But then you get the sequel where it's uh, it sucks after sucks. The entire Mega Mind sequel thing being bad has gotten so big that multiple news organizations have picked up on this who really have no stake in this whatsoever, stating that fans who have been waiting for Mega Mind 2 for years might as well just have kept on waiting so their dreams would have never been smashed and burned. I like how this basically implies dying before ever seeing a Mega Mind sequel is better than actually seeing a Mega Mind sequel. People have been requesting Will Ferrell say something, but you want to know something interesting? Will Ferrell is actually playing another villain for a sequel movie that is Despicable Me 4, and where he shares similar traits to the main villain in that film, but it just isn't Megamind. Now, there is a valid reason for this. The first Megamind didn't do the greatest when it comes to the box office. I mean, it wasn't like a failure. The budget for the film was $130 million, and it made back $321 million, basically breaking even, when all advertising is accounted for. However, when you compare villain movies about a villain who becomes good, another one that came out the same year as Megamind, known as Despicable Me, did way better. Despicable Me, a lower budget of 69 million, made back 543 million dollars. So it's no wonder Will Ferrell would abandon Megamind, I don't blame him. Ironically enough, there's more dough to be made elsewhere rather than a Megamind sequel, which its own purpose is to try and make dough. What makes this even more insulting is that the trailer for the Megamind sequel is spliced with footage from the first movie that looks way better animation wise and also stylistically wise that you're just immediately vomited towards with the striking difference that is the sequel to the film. I mean, if I were in charge of making this trailer, I would have probably been like, we probably shouldn't show footage of the first movie, then show the sequel footage, because it's just going to piss a lot of people off. What makes it even more funny is that the poster for this movie looks like it's like an early 2010s poster for a video game. This is the quality we're judging it by here. What even makes it even more entertaining is that a Megamind billboard that was in a movie theater in Michigan that had been around for almost 14 years was announced to be taken down following the release of this trailer, as if seeing the Peacock trailer for the Megamind sequel told the movie theater to pack it all up. I do agree, maybe it might have been best if this movie was just left alone, forever a one and done thing. It's kind of a gross feeling seeing the aftermath of Megamind, knowing that it will never live up to its original form. The first movie has such incredible visuals and, and such incredible characters so well written that perhaps it was foolish to ever think it would ever be on par ever again. A movie set 14 years after the release of its original. I mean, where else have I heard this before? That's right, Incredibles. Incredibles 1 came out in 2004, and Incredibles 2 came out in 2018. 14 years after the original. And for me personally, the second one is nowhere near as good as its first counterpart. I do think timing impacts a sequel a lot, whether or not people remember how to write their own characters. I'm not saying you have to release a sequel right away, I'm just saying time it well. I've been Zeepster, I love you guys, okay bye, subscribe and like, bye.